Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we will be looking at a hard web challenge race to win from the TyphoonCon CTF, a CTF that happened about a month ago uh, organized by SSD Secure Disclosure. And before we jump into the challenge uh, I would like to tell you about SSD Secure Disclosure because if you ever find a vulnerability in a common product such as a CMS, an operating system uh, or anything else then be sure to contact SSD Secure Disclosure as they can help you with getting it responsibly and securely disclosed as well as getting you rewarded for your finding obviously. So if you're interested in that uh, visit the links down below in the description but without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So let's get into the challenge. So we have this index.php page that we can view and it seems to show the source code of it. It says symbols are to the mind what tools are to the hand, an extended application of its powers. Okay, then it starts with an if is set request. Now this request here is just any parameter, any post, get or cookie. Um, so if the D parameter is set then it will run this code and it will start creating a new directory iterator with our input. Now let's quickly google what this directory iterator is um, and on php.net we can read that this class provided provides a simple interface for viewing the contents of the file system directories. Okay, and we can see that there's a lot of functions here and a quick example. Uh, so it's going to loop over the, them uh, as files I get. Yeah, guess. Yeah, so you loop over a directory iterator and you get the files. So, okay, directory iterator with our input, so our file name or our directory name, then it will loop over that iterator and echo out the file m time, which is the time that the file was modified. So it will echo that out and then exit. Okay, so that's for uh, the input D. Then we also have the input P. So if the P is set, then we will include uh, our input with .config.php appended to it. Um, so this include is obviously very important because we control something in this include so that may lead to a local file inclusion. However, we have this .config.php that's being appended which, which is obviously making it hard. Um, but this means that we can read any file that ends with .config.php. If that's not the case that it will highlight this file and that's what we are seeing right now. Um, but let's start out with playing a bit uh, with this D parameter here. So what if I supply question mark D equals slash? Okay, then we see two files here. So one, two. That means that there are two files in the root directory. I am quickly going to work here. So okay. We can also supply a dot, which is a current directory, and we see that there are six files in the current directory. Okay, interesting. In the directory above from this there are two files again um, in slash at C there are two files again so okay we can just get the amount of files here but besides that we're not getting really any information or are we because we are inputting a string here and there are some other things that we could try to input and what those things are called are they are called wrappers. So let's Google PHP wrappers. And then we get this page supported protocols and wrappers. And for example, one of them is the file wrapper that we've probably all seen before. So if I do just file slash, then we just get the same as when we just supply this slash. Uh, we have the HTTP ones. So maybe we can uh, go on the web with this. So what if I supply itself? Will, will that result in something here? No, doesn't seem like it. Okay, so yeah, doesn't seem to do anything. Uh, but we have a bunch more uh, wrappers here. And one of the interesting ones is find path names matching a 
pattern, the glob wrapper. And let's look at an example here. So in this case, it's going to loop over all the PHP files in a certain directory. So you have your glob wrapper, then the directory, and then star.php. So this is going to show all the uh, PHP files. And we can use that wrapper because we can say, for example, glob and then um, the current directory, uh, all files starting. Uh, we know that index.php is a file, for example, so I can do uh, star.php. And this will show all the files, uh, all the PHP files. And there seem to be three PHP files. Now, if I want to have the index file, I can, for example, do index. And then we only get one because the star uh, gets becomes that file. But we can also use that to uh, enumerate file names or brute force them in a bit of a smart way. For example, we can say, how many files in the current directory start with an A? None. How many start with a B? Two. Okay. How many start with BA? Two. Okay. How many start with BAA? None. BAB? None. And so on and so forth. And that way we can brute force all the file names. And actually, that's a pretty good way of finding them out. So let's script that because we don't want to do all of that manually because that will take a while. This is still a brute force. So I have my script up here and let's go through it. So first of all, we are going to import requests because we're going to use that module um, to make requests. This is a Python, uh, Python script, by the way. Then we're going to import string. Import uh, string is a useful module that just contains all the printable characters. Um, so that's that. And then we define a function get amount of files for a specific glob. And now all that this function is going to do, it's going to send a request with a certain uh, glob wrapper and it's going to return the amount of files that exist. So we supply our URL, which is this. And then we make a get request to our URL with the question mark D equals the glob wrapper and then the glob parameter that we supplied. Then we are going to return the length of the response content split. So if you look at the response content here, for, for example, BA star, if we were to split that on a space, then we'd get a, uh, an array or a list of two elements, so the length will be two. So that's all that this function is doing. Cool, now we move on to the, to the bulk of the program, which is the main here. I'm first of all gonna start off with getting the amount of files that exist in the current directory. And then I can say, okay, we detected this amount of files. Um, now I'm going to make an empty list. And this is going to be a list containing all the file names we've already found. And then I'm going to start with an empty file name because in the beginning, you don't know yet any letter of any files yet. Uh, how long does this program need to run? Well, whilst the length of the files we've already found, so the amount of files we've already found, while that is smaller than the amount of files that exist, then that means that you haven't found all files, so you need to keep searching. Okay, let's start that search. So I'm going to start this for loop here. I'm going to say for every letter in string.printable, so every printable letter. However, there are some exceptions. For example, the star, we don't want to do that because that will always uh, be it. Then we have the slashes. We don't really want them to be included. The question mark, again, uh, will be something. The hash symbol will be used in a URL in a different way. Uh, the end symbol as well. So we, we're just excluding them for simplicity's sake. So we're just looping over all the letters. And then we are saying, okay, get me an amount of files that start with that specific letter. If that amount is greater than zero, then we're going to start this logic. If it's not greater than zero, if there, we haven't found any files with that letter, we just move on to the next letter, to the next letter, to the next letter, until we find somewhere uh, where the amount is larger than zero. <clears throat> now this logic is a bit complex here. Um, what we are trying to do here, if we find a file, uh, if we found, find a letter of a file, then we need to make sure that we uh, 
that if this amount is higher than, for example, one, it can also be two, three, or four, like for example, in this case, for BA, the amount was two, then we need to make sure that we don't repeatedly find the same file. So I'm gonna say, okay, exists is a variable that's gonna contain the amount of files that already exist with those beginning letters. So we're gonna loop over all the files that we've already found, and if they have the same start, so if that file is already the same as what we are currently brute forcing, then we're gonna say, okay, exists plus one. What does that mean then? Then we can say, okay, if we have already found, uh, if we have found less files than the amount of files that um, the script gave back to us, then that means that there are still files to be found with this specific letter, so we need to keep on going. However, if we've already found all the files with uh, that specific letter, then we don't need to keep going, obviously. However, if we need to keep going, then we're gonna add that letter to our file name. We're gonna print out a message that says, well, I found this amount of files starting with that file name. And then we break and uh, we obviously continue looping and find a new letter for a file. Then here we have this else at the bottom. Now, what does that mean? Um, when is this going to be run? Because this is tied to this for loop. If this for loop were to finish, uh, then it, without ever breaking, then this else loop is going to be called. What does that mean? If we have looped over all the letters and none of the letters were gave us any new files, then that means that obviously our file name is complete. So we're done with that file name. So what do I need to do? Well, I'm gonna append that file name that we just found to the files uh, array, or list rather, and I'm gonna set the file name to be an empty string again. And then lastly, once all of that is done, once we have found all the files, we're gonna print out that files list. Now I know this code may sound a bit confusing, um, so definitely go back and look over it. However, I'm gonna just run the program and it's gonna make a lot of sense what it's doing. Okay. So let's run Python 3 and I call the script uh, file name brute force. We're gonna run that and it detects, detects four files and it starts doing things. It found, for example, two files. Oh, I seem to have a little bit of an error here. <laughs> let's really quickly fix that. It found, it found two files starting with the letter B. Then I found two files starting with the letter BA, two with the letter BAC, and so on for backup. So two files start with, start with backup. But then there's only one file starting with backup C, and that file is backup config. Then we start going again over uh, backup. Now, my script just does the job, however, it's not very performant. For example, all of these requests were already made, so um, but yeah, disregard that because it just finds every file. Um, so okay, then we are back at backup and we have another file that we need to find and that file starts with backup dot and then we have backup.config.php it seems. Then we're gonna find index.php and phpinfo.config.php and that gives us these four files um, that we found that we can check out because some of these were unknown to us. Okay, so the first file we can check out is the backup config file. So let's do that. Let's go to slash ctf slash backup config. And that file seems to be empty. If we inspect the elements and we look at the network, we see that we get a 200. However, the file seems to be empty. Okay, bummer. Uh, moving on to backup.config.php. Backup.config.php returns cannot access a config file directly. Okay, so that does something. It runs the PHP code, but we cannot access it directly, it seems. Then index.php we've obviously already viewed. Uh, however, we haven't viewed phpinfo.config.php. So if we go to that file, we also cannot access it directly. Okay. Um, interesting. However, now we know all the files that exist. And we have found files that end in .config.php. Earlier, we had already identified that if we have files that contain .config.php, 
that we can then include them, perform a local file inclusion on them. So let's do that. So with uh, the dash p parameter, so I'm quickly going to go over here. So index.php and then the p arguments equals and I'm going to say, for example, backup because .config.php is going to be appended to it. And when we do that, we see an empty page. Weird. Um, was the file included successfully? Probably yes. However, it didn't print anything out because it, this is a PHP file and maybe it just doesn't echo anything. But don't fear because our wrappers are here to help us again. Because in this case, in, we have control over the beginning of this include statement, over everything in the beginning. We just don't have control over the end, which will contain .config.php. However, we don't need to say question mark p equals and then backup. We can start with question mark p equals php, then the php wrapper. And the php wrapper has something interesting. We can perform, we can do filter, then we can say convert base 64 dash and code and then slash the resource. And this is the resource that we are going to be base 64 encoding. So what does it be, this PHP wrapper do, do? It takes in a resource and it base 64 encodes it and returns the output. And well, what resource are we going to want to base 64 encode? Well, why don't we base 64 encode the backup? dot config dot php file and if we run that we see that we get this base64 string so let's copy this and let's base64 decode it so i'm going to echo out our string and then say base64 dash d for decoding it and that shows us this input here so again it's php code this time the caption says magic written uh, poorly. Magic is the art of causing changes in consciousness to occur in accordance with the will. Whatever that may mean, but then we have some very, very small amount of code. Uh, it starts with if uh, app is not defined, then it's going to uh, die saying cannot access a config file directly, which is what we saw when we tried to access this directly. However, if uh, we don't access it directly, then this is going to happen. It's going to say if or if s is a parameter, a get parameter, post parameter, or a cookie, then it's going to copy our input into the backup config file. And our input is going to be a file name, so it's going to copy that file into the backup config file. And earlier we saw that we can actually read that backup config file because we know it exists and we know where it is. So uh, if we can execute this, then we can copy arbitrary files because we have full control over this parameter and we can basically read arbitrary files. So let's try to do that. Um, so I'm going to go back to here, start that in a new tab here. And um, okay, first things first, we need to include the backup scripts because that's the only way to access it where our app is going to be defined. So, okay, question mark p equals backup. We know that works, we know that does this. Now we can say and the s equals, for example, slash, slash etsy slash passwd. Okay, we don't get any output, which is normal because it just copied the file. However, now we should be able to go to backup config and that should show us the etsy passwd file. And that is how we are able to get local file inclusion uh, on this machine. Now, in the next part, we are going to look at how we can use this to get the flag, because that may not be as, quite as simple as you think. So we had just figured out how to get local file inclusion or how to read files on the file system. Now let's see if we can get an RCE on this machine. And there are many ways to do this. However, if you try all of them, they won't work. But there is a very unknown way that I would like to detail today that might work. 
and that is the PHP session upload progress way. Um, so yeah, that's a whole mouthful, but let's uh, cover it. Uh, and what better way to read about it than this paper uh, written by Faisal, a great guy, cool paper. Uh, he first starts with explaining what path traversal is and stuff like that. But here in the part about the attack, he says, in order for this attack to work, you must have a local file inclusion. Okay. And then it starts talking about this session upload progress. So what is it? It's the ability for PHP to track big files, um, the progress of them being uploaded. So you can say this file has upload, been uploaded for 10% and so on. And this progress is stored in the session super global. Uh, and what this is pretty much for every user, PHP can store a session that is also stored on the file system. Um, and yeah, in that session, you can have information about a specific user. And the thing is, if we control this session upload progress, then we can control this session file that is being stored. And the goal is then to read that session file that is being stored and include it and that way have code execution because our input goes into that file and we include that file so then we can get our CE. That's the idea here. Now this session upload progress is enabled by default on uh, in PHP, so that's great. But then the next thing that we need is a session. And um, here it says to start a session in PHP, you need to put a, or you need to run session underscore, underscore start in your code. We haven't seen that yet. I also haven't seen a cookie with a session here. No, so okay. No session has been started yet. That's a bummer because does that mean that we cannot do this? No, because the researcher has found a bypass and he says that if we provide the PHP session upload progress in the post data as multi-part data, then PHP will enable, will create a session for us. So that's amazing. And that's the first thing that we're going to take a look at. So here, um, the researcher has a demo. So first he just curls with the header supplying a cookie, PHP session ID. However, that doesn't create a session. Then he tries uh, in post data with PHP session upload progress, but that also doesn't create a session. However, with a capital F, so supplying it as um, like form post data with a file, then a session is created. So that's the first thing that we are going to try out. And for this, I would like to create a session called, um, so let's wait, let's, um, a session called pink. So we already had a way of reading files. So let's see if that session already exists. It shouldn't, but let's just see. So, okay. Um, we included the backup file and with the S parameter, we could then uh, put this file in backup config. If I reload backup config, it seems to have cached this. So I'm going to remove the cache and reload this. Is it still cached or is something going wrong? Well, it's not cached anymore. However, the file is not changing. So that must mean that this doesn't exist, that this file doesn't exist. Okay, let's try creating one based on what this researcher said. So we're going to do a curl here containing uh, our PHP session ID that should create it using that set PHP session upload progress. And this curl request has been terribly copied um, <laughs> from there, but we are going to supply it like this. Just change it up. The PHP session ID name should be pink. And PHP session upload a random dash here, upload progress can be anything. And the file that we're gonna include, yeah, let's use Etsy hostname. And let's run that. Uh, a not found, I also think that means that that won't change, yeah, no. Uh, because we curled the root directory, let's curl slash ctf index.php, so we're actually running PHP. Okay, now let's see if we can read this file now. We still cannot read this file. Do we have a cache going on? No, we don't. Okay, let's do some debugging here. I think what might be missing is a space there. So let's try that out. Run this and reload this. And now we see, wow, something changed here. 
that's crazy and yeah really 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 cool because now we have this file where we control well we see for example already the name here uh, host name so that's already already interesting now um, we also see anything here which is something that we supplied I guess because we set PHP let me do an L here yeah PHP session upload progress equals anything can I really supply anything here like a PHP echo one like that uh, that didn't quite work let's see if we can fix that so it doesn't seem to like some of the things that are going on in here maybe I need to do some weird stuff here okay something is not being liked here um, that works let's keep on working on this so can we do this uh, no we already cannot do that why is that the case okay with backslashing both it works so then maybe we just need to do a lot of backslashes so echo one let's also backslash that and let's then do backslash question mark backslash that okay that run that ran uh, maybe spaces are not allowed well let's just see what uh, what happened here so reload this page and then reload this and now we see some things have happened here uh, our slashes have just been literally taken and haven't been parsed and it has been taken as a single field as well so yeah some things are going on here preventing us from doing what we want uh, but yeah don't don't fear let's just keep on reading the paper but now we already know that we can set a specific um, a specific file we can put something in a specific file and we can view the output of that which is already progress and we do it we're doing that through this session okay scrolling down uh, it explains this upload progress underscore key that we saw our output comes in it then also explains a cleanup which will uh, clear the data um, if you're not fast enough and then here it says okay let's try a race condition by supplying this as that that's what we tried as well we saw that yes our output here uh, from our PHP session upload progress actually ends up in the file so that is amazing now it's gonna try with uh, a PHP and that worked for him uh, with his proof of concept so let's see what his proof of concept does his proof of concept seems to be just fine with um, providing PHP in there like that interesting um, what we can do is we can try to capture this in burp and see what happens there so how are we gonna go about that we have this post request can we proxy that and then proxy that to localhost uh, 8080 I believe and then in burp well, this is not it let's try that again and then in burp we catch that exactly like here and now we can uh, edit this this might be a bit small my apologies for that but now we can edit this to echo one question mark that and forward it and then we come back with um, success so we just had to run it through burp to get that to work now we can include this file and view this file and now all the way at the bottom here we see our PHP 
payloads that should run, but that doesn't run. Damn it. What's going on here? What's the issue? Well, this backup config file is not a PHP file, so it's not gonna run here. We need to include this file. If the name was .php, then it would run. However, we need to uh, either put it in a .php file, which we can't, or we need to include it uh, in some way. Going back to our index file, we have this include here with the p parameter. However, it has this .config.php always appended to it. So we can't just include uh, that. So that's, that's a real bummer. So yeah, does this technique not work? Well, in, the, in this case, it doesn't seem likely that it's going to work. However, we are not going to give up yet. So that's a real bummer. It doesn't work like we expected it to work, but we have found or we have gotten some new progress and we can put user data into a file. Now, if we can control a file that opens some new options. Um, for example, in PHP, there is this very interesting wrapper, the zlib wrapper, and this contains the zip wrapper and it works as shown here. So you have, you have your zip wrapper, then you have an archive.zip, and this can be any file on the file system. That is going to be unzipped, and then we have a hashtag, and then you can include a file, or you can show a file that's in that zip that was just unzipped. Um, now, this is interesting, because earlier we noticed that, well, we need to include a file, but we can only include .config.php files, and we can only write to the backup config file, which does not end in .config.php. However, what if we were to include, so with, that, uh, with the p parameter, using this zip wrapper, then we say, okay, unzip backup config, because we can control backup config. Um, so we can put a zip in there, unzip that, and then in that zip, we are gonna put a malicious file for example, called pink, uh, pink.config.php. So in our eventual payload here, we only need pink because .config.php is appended to it. So that's the idea of what we want to do. So what do we need? Well, first of all, we need our vulnerable pink.config.php file. Um, so let me quickly grab that. So I created the following, just php echo uh, one, two, three. However, let's... Um, Let's make let's level this file up a bit to also include a payload because else it 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 will be not that nice. So cool, we can echo that. However, I also want to run a system and I want to run system get and then in here I can just put um, cmd. And okay, we need to, uh, well, let's use double quotes here and single quotes on the outsides. Okay, that looks good. And then we can put that into pink.config.php. And that is our, um, our payload here that we're gonna try to uh, get the server to run. So now what I want to do is I want to zip this file into, um, well, let's just call this malicious.zip for now because eventually we'll, we will put it in the backup config file. So we're going to zip pink.config.php. Okay, so now we can catch this malicious file and that's all cool. However, now we need to put this into here. And as we can see, this, this will also include a lot of other information, such as upload progress and all of this. And if we're just going to try to unzip that, then that's going to make for issues. Um, because that's not going to work, it's going to give errors. And that's a bummer, but we can get around that. Because we have a lot, a lot of freedom here. Um, and we have a way of removing that data and I'm, and I'm going to show that to you right right now. So the idea here is that we can 
base64 and code files, uh, decode files on the server using that PHP wrapper that we were using earlier. When you decode something as base64, some data will disappear. For example, here I have an example. We have here upload progress and then some base64 data, a zip, and then the rest of the data. If I base64 that once, you will see that some of this data has already disappeared. Base64 that another time, we still have a bit of data left. Base64 that once more, and now we basically just have the zip left. So if we unzip that, we just have our ping.config.php file here. So that's the idea. We are gonna zip or uh, we are gonna base64 or zip three times, and then we're gonna let the server decode it uh, base64 three times as well, and then hopefully we will get some output. However, there's a couple issues. Um, for example, in Cyberchef here, if you have equal signs in your uh, base64 and you just try to decode it again, it just works. However, PHP will throw an error, so we will need to make sure that our base64 encoded version never has these equal signs. On top of that, I have some ace as padding here because if I don't, it won't work as well. So we'll, we'll need to figure that out. So there are some steps that we need to take in order to get this working correctly. Um, so the, e the easiest way to create our uh, base64 here is obviously to, to do this and then base64 uh, with w0 to not have new lines and output and then base64 that again and then base64 that once more. However, if I copy this, uh, yeah, let's just put it in here as an example. And if I get all of this going, then you will see things go wrong because of the padding, because of stuff. So um, what I wrote is a really quick short script that I'm not going to pay too much attention to. Uh, so I found this script here that's going to import string, import random, import base64. Um, it's then going to open my malicious zip and read it and then it's going to base64 encode it three times with some random junk and then it's going to check if uh, the equal sign is not in any of the decodings then it's valid and else it's going to just keep on trying until it has that. So with that uh, base64 encoded we can move on a bit because else it would take a while uh, trying this so I'm just skipping that part a little bit. Okay, so now we want to obviously get that back into our. Um, we want to get this base64 data into our backup config file so we can get it out and, and, and work with it. So for that, I'm going to catch this request in burp again, paste our base64 in here, and I'm also quickly going to change the session ID so we get a new session because our last one is kind of filled with a lot of junk and it's nice to start with a uh, clean slate. So let's send that and now let's include that here. So, oh, so include session pink two and in backup config, we should now see our base64 here. Now let's try this out in here. So, okay, the first base64 already seems to have failed because this doesn't look like base64 data anymore. So I'm going to add some padding and that looks really nice here. So let's see if that works. Uh, but then this doesn't look nice. So let's add some more padding. Okay, that looks quite nice. This looks decent as well. And this looks good as well. And if we also check that there's no equal signs, uh, we, we can also verify that. And now this is a pcap, uh, not a pcap, a pk file, a zip file. Therefore, that when you unzip, you get the ping.config.php file. So that's really cool. So this looks like it might work. Amazing. Um, what's next? We need to base64 decode this file three times and put it in the backup config file once more. So for that we can um, go back here because this is what we use to put files in backup config, this s here, and we have already found out that we can uh, use PHP wrappers in the way where we supply a filter. Then we do convert.base64-decode and now what we can do is we can pipe that to itself again, pipe it to itself once more, so that's three times, and then finish with a slash, and then say, I'm just going to copy this quickly, 
um, slash resource equals and then the file that we want to include, which was session pink2. So if we run that and decode backup config now once more, we see that this is an, an octet stream. I'm going to save this really quickly. And now if I run file on downloads uh, backup config, we see that that's just data. Okay, so that's it's not too promising. What if I try to unzip that? Did that work or not? Uh, it seems like it cannot find the zip. Oh, it's expecting uh, a .zip file. So let's move that to uh, downloads backup config .zip. And then let's unzip the zip file. And that did not seem to work either. It did not seem to accept it to accept it as a zip. So I'm very doubtful for this, but I can already see the issue here. I forgot to put in the padding in the beginning here. The padding that we identified should be six A's. So let me quickly do that again. Um, so we're gonna start out again with editing this. I'm gonna use pink three as the session ID now, paste in that with our padding at the front forward that. Now uh, I'm going to include that file. Okay, uh, let's just do that here. So pink three, remove all of that for a second, right? Reload this. Now we have that there. And now we can send this request that's going to decode it three times. And now it should hopefully be a zip. So let's save this once more and do another file on that. And now it says zip archive data. Okay, amazing. Now we have our zip, moment of truth. Can we unzip that zip and get our ping.config.php file to be included? Let's run it. I run this, I don't see any output, so that already doesn't sound too good to me. CMD equals ID. I don't see anything, so I think this failed. Let me quickly find out why that failed. Okay, and I think I found out why that failed actually, because we're using this hashtag here. However, uh, we need to use a hashtag, but now this hashtag is part of the URL, which means it's not in the get parameter anymore. So we need to use a URL encoded version of it, which is percent %23. And now we finally see our 123 string. And if I didn't make a mistake in the payload, if I do cmd equals id, then we should get code execution finally. And that is how we solved this ridiculous uh, challenge in the CTF. I think this is a super, super creative one. And I loved trying to figure it out uh, myself and, and, and working with it. It was uh, a pleasure. I hope you are as mind blown as I am. Um, so yeah, that, that's just one of the better challenges, one of the best challenges of the TyphoonCon CTF which was an amazing CTF organized by, of course, SSD Secure Disclosure. Again, the links are down below in the description if you would like more information. As always, if you like this video, like it, subscribe if that's something that you want to do, and I will see you guys in another one. Take care.